The college basketball experience final four reaction show and look ahead to the national championship game uh, episode on the sports gambling podcast network is brought to you by cut cut is a peer to peer social betting platform. That's us based and available in 40 different states. Head to cut.com. That's K U T T.com. Use that promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by underdog fantasy. <laughs> yes. Play their, their uh, pick them, their fantasy pick them for a chance to win a hundred times the amount of money you enter in college hoops, which we cashed on tonight, NBA, MLB, NHL, and much, much more sign up today with the promo code TCE SGPN. You get a hundred percent deposit match. We're also brought to you by the premier arbitrage uh, sports betting tool. AVO, yes, use their tool to uh, to bet both sides and lock in a profit. Access their platform for free at the uh, arbsvsodds.com. That's arbsvsodds.com. Plus, in honor of Masters Week, uh, the Golf Gambling Pass Podcast guys are giving away a tailor made Spider X putter for free. Enter at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash masters at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash masters. And remember, as always, folks, to let it ride. Hey, this is Pac Man Jones. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Uh, if you're wondering who the hell you're listening to, my name is Colby Swigger, Dan Base Dan, aka Pick Don D. That's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under, where a man thinks on his feet, speaks with his fists, and lives by his wits. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. And you're nothing but a chameleon, lemon headed, coward, terrorist pussy. And I'm after you, buddy. You're going to pay for it. Good night. Unbelievable. So I, uh, I went 0 and 2 ATS. But I did go two and zero on the unders. Uh, I am joined by my co-host. Give it up for former former video coordinator for Hall of Fame coach Bob Huggins and Frank Martin, host of the Big Twelve College Experience, host of the Ryan and Russ Show. Give it up for Ryan McIntyre, aka Mana Lan Mac. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, man. Yeah, thank God for them unders. Football unders always a winner. Cheers. Mac tonight. Come on, make it Mac tonight. Sorry, Muddy Waters, letting uh, he's getting a that getting a girl. howl in. He wants some mic. So he wants some mic time. Uh yeah. I mean, uh, t- chalk is speaking. Shout out to biggest scumbag saying best sports podcast. Period. Great year, boys. I appreciate it. And uh, YouTube.com slash the college experience. Get on over there. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe. I know we only have one basketball game left, but don't forget the off season. Moneyline Max has already been going through this shit. We're going to be heavy in the off season. The on college basketball coaching changes things. You know, uh, the transfer portal stuff. Also, uh, also, uh, you know, college football, college baseball content, FCS college football. So, shout out to Cody Mitchell. Says don't. Get a chance to get on here a lot. State Highway Patrol in Columbus loves your show. Had the pod on when I got a DUI last month. Don't drink and drive, and the cop says he loves the pod. Hey, I mean, <laughs> there's so many ways that I could respond to that one. Um, love the love uh, Columbus, Ohio, in general. I forget. Is it Tommy's? That's our diner there. 
We have a. a, a I mean, a, I can't. I can't endorse that statement. Well, look, that's why you produce. All right. Yeah. You, you stay behind the scenes, all right? And uh, next time I'll text you before you come on the fucking mic, all right? Purdue fans um, don't like yeah. Ohio State either, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, Tommy's Diner in Columbus is cool. And then we got, we got uh, you know, we got just a b- bunch of family there. You know what I mean? There's a bunch of listeners. Now we got the police department on our side. So we'll, I wonder if they'll give us the same leeway they'll give those fucking Ohio State players, all right? <laughs> so if I come to town... Can I act like I'm back in Columbia and shoot an AK-47 up into the sky? Piss drunk? We'll see. What do you think, Mac? You think that'd be cool? They'd be like, well, yeah. he's the host of the college experience. This picked on D guy can do whatever the fuck he wants. You yeah, fire all off we, all, all AK-47. We say, well, we, we're not going to bring Beanie because we're our ass going to get arrested with Beanie. They're gonna be like, hey, that's that fucking jackass that fucking <laughs> likes Michigan and sleeping over with fucking... <laughs> High school players like fucking Harbaugh. So get, <laughs> we ain't bringing Phoenix. <laughs> o H I O. I don't know if I would want to come because I'm a state patrol in Ohio. They have a they have a way of always finding the people with Michigan license plates and pulling those cars over mm, on, the, mm, on the turn. Your ass. So, As they yeah. should. That's called a rivalry. Yeah. All right. Um. Well, uh, both games. I mean, look. I, I, I can't wait to watch the national championship game. I think March Madness is the greatest postseason in all of American sports or all sports in general. Cause I don't really, I do watch the CFL. Um, I did go to Patty C's. Uh, well, we had a little Patty C's birthday was today. So we, uh, we'll get together. Yeah. We went out and had some cocktails, but I'll be honest. Kind of thought both games were kind of boring as fuck. I mean, they, I mean it, the Alabama UConn game was better, I think. Yeah. Even though I feel like I should have hit with the twelve points in Bama, but UConn clearly kicked it into another gear. NC State Purdue, uh, Purdue to their credit, I did not see the game going like that. Like them just controlling it right from the start. Um. I enjoyed uh, the shuffleboard at the bar <laughs> because I was like, this game's boring as fuck. Uh, yeah. The specifically the NC State Purdue game more so than the other one. I was like, um, yeah, let's. I mean, we still had it on, but I wasn't paying as close attention because, um, I thought the game was somewhat boring. Um, your thoughts on the NC State Purdue game? You, I, and. In my opinion, why you thought it was boring is because it was at a football stadium. I, I, I hate, I hate these final fours of football stadiums. I know we took the unders and that was our angle and it helped us win a couple of bets, but it does, it doesn't feel like the rest of the season. And I know you want to get as much money, get as many people in there, but I, it, it kind of takes the environment out of it. It's not loud. It's more echoey. Um, Basketball's not uh, meant to be played in a football stadium. I've said dude, that for after years. after watching the NIT at Hinkle, I was like, this was rocking. Now I know Indiana yeah. State had a nice draw because they're in state, but it's just I couldn't agree more. You see that one guy's uh I I I yeah. subtweeted this guy who sat up in the rafters. You need a like you might as well be flying and fucking <laughs> I it's mean ridiculous. the blimp yeah. that like I, I was like, how do you even enjoy it? It show he she like sh- I know the game hadn't started yet, but he like shows around and, like some girls just on her phone, um, but still, um, unfortunately, you know corporate America tries to get their hands on every fucking thing that's great in this country, and uh, you know this is another example of it uh, being dubbed down a little bit. But I mean, as far as the game, let's talk. Hey, NC State fans, I cashed in on your little pussy school. All right, for a couple couple wagers down the down the stretch, but as Ricky Bobby says, if you're not first, you're last, motherfucker. So you happy because you got a little final four run? Fuck out of here! Fuck out of here! We we look, you suck. You folded at the biggest moment. Did they even ever have the lead? I think they did, right? They had like a five to four lead or something, right? I think they might have had the lead once. 
Yeah, it was. Um, they were. Out but bad. I'll, I'll tell you this, man. Like, uh, finally, somebody into, made some jump shots against them. Nobody went forty percent from three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and, cr- and credit to uh, Purdue because uh, NC State only shot twenty six percent from three. I thought coming into the game, part of my handicap was I thought that uh, they would, I mean, and I did hit the over on Burns uh, assist, but I thought they'd maybe, you know, utilize him and maybe they'd force Purdue to go to a zone and then NC state would be able to hit the three. Well, they were five of 19 from three. They only shot four free throws though, compared to Purdue's 10. Um, but uh, I'm not, who am I kidding? It's, I, I thought Purdue would just dominated the fucking game. This was not like the Tennessee game. This was domination. They out rebounded them by 10. Um, shout out to Purdue. I mean, look, Purdue hasn't, has never won a national championship, right? Mm-hmm. It would be awesome if they won a national championship. And Beanick would look like a fucking genius because he called this shit after he, after he wanted. Beanick, he, he somewhat called this because he also called for Matt Painter to be fired for like a week. Because I knew um, how good the team was last yeah. year, too. But They're way uh, better this than last year. they are. They get it. Well, yeah. they get the addition of shots. the addition of Lance Jones. Like yeah. early on, he was the big one who was just hitting shot after shot. Fletch got involved late. Braden Smith had maybe his worst game of the of the season today. I honestly thought Colby that Purdue didn't play well, like at all. They kind of slept walked through the first half. I mean, Smith had five turnovers. Two of them were over and backs, just like little fluky shit. Yeah. But NC um, state was also really sloppy with the ball too. I thought Marcel was bad. Yeah. I, I thought them getting out in, tra- in transition was actually better than them playing in the half court. Um, and Middlebrooks was better on the floor defending Edie than Burns was. So when they wanted Burns out there offensively, they weren't doing as well defensively. So that was that was my take on the, on that game. I, I don't think you're getting a three point performance from Braden Smith next game. I'll yeah. just say that. So fair. I, I think um, Purdue dodged a bullet winning that game when he dropped an egg. Fair, fair. Um well I mean look the pussy pack dude the, they always they always when it comes to a gigantic game, they 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 lose. You know, they just had uh, a bunch of gigantic games, but we knew they couldn't win on the biggest plateau. They the did their thing. job, man. I know, they prevented I know, man. the fucking pussy ass Duke Blue Devils from getting there on that fluke ass <laughs> Houston. Uh, so I and- salute the pussy pack. Thank you that I did not have to watch Duke in the final four because Jamal Shedd went down. Go pussy pack. Shout out to NC State. Yeah, I, I look. I'm happy too because Kevin Keats will be there another decade. They'll build him a yeah. statue, and they only make the tournament, you know, one other time. Uh, and that'll, they'll lose in the play-in game uh, three years from now. Um, I got the I got the crystal ball here. Um, both unders hit for me though, and then I mean, I was surprised. I mean, I, were you surprised that NC State only scored 50 points? Yeah, just because they've been shooting the ball so so well coming into it. I mean, Marcel can throw it in the ocean. I mean, that they weren't just missing outside of uh, DJ Horn. They were missing bad. I mean, they it looked like the moment got too big. It looked like they kind of went back to the version of themselves that they were in January, February, and it wasn't just, oh, the ACC is really good and NC State's been undervalued. No, NC State wasn't a really good team for four months. They just they hit a great 10-game span where they made every shot and their opponents did not make anything, and you see this with a couple teams a year. Um, they they look like their uh, version of themselves for four months tonight. Yeah, and I mean, one thing, that's what I'm saying, is like they didn't you know, they didn't rise to the occasion. See at East Carolina, you rise to the occasion. And, uh, if you, I I mean, you saw it, you saw it with this ECU kid against these, here we go. He won't shake his hand. Hey, don't mute the video, buddy. I mean, uh, let's just look at this again. 
Yes! Yes! <laughs> ECU representing much better than the Pussy Pack, in my opinion. Big game moment. Seven on one. All right. Seven on one, and what happens? Great. <laughs> I mean, the only reason I apologize, the only reason why I muted the beginning was I didn't want it to be copyrighted. There's the Florida Georgia Line song in the background before your. Oh, that's why I got had the other day. Nice play. Um, well, I'm just saying ECU rises to the occasion. We saw it this past week right there with that guy currently enrolled at ECU destroying a bunch of fucking losers. Uh, then, you know, you saw the pussy pack big stage, much like the kid from ECU. And what do they do? They fold. They fold. All right. Um, great, look, great, I, great run, NC State. But they they lost four. They lost their last four games of the regular season for a reason. They lost seven out of eight or seven out of nine, whatever the fuck it was, for a reason. They had clear holes. It'll be a run that they'll remember forever. Uh, Kevin Keats extension too. Yeah, <laughs> I know you love that. And DJ Burns got the Applebee's nil deal. Yeah. That- Good story. They, go out, they go out, get you some chicken cutlets. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. It's a great run. Um, uh, I, I don't want to move on from this game without stating. I think the injury to Michael O'Connell in that game, uh, whatever he did in the fast break, oh, yeah, uh, misstep, rolled his ankle, pulled his hamstring, whatever he did. Uh, that was a big blow. I mean, yeah. point guard for this team, uh, they have to go without him for at least 10 minutes of game time. Um, that one – was tough. Um, DJ Horn did fine in replacement, but ultimately it's not the same, obviously. Uh, Coley, last thing, uh, since you had the crystal ball out, uh, when NC State tries to, you know, revere Kevin Keats and, you know, make him uh, the next Jimmy, uh, next Valvano, uh, what are you going to be saying to NC State fans uh, 20 years from now? Are you going to be saying... Well, Great see, it run, was, or are you going to be saying fluky? Yeah, not what are just, you doing? I, I'm going to say that was bullshit. You know what I mean? You got a nice little path, got lucky, caught lightning in a bottle, but it didn't lead you anywhere. You, it, look, like I said, if you don't take home the crown, you're nothing. All right. You're in the same spot as ECU, as far as I'm concerned. All you, right. You, you want to make our first bet next year? Yeah. They will miss the NCAA tournament. Oh, this year. load up. I will load bet up. the house on that. Load up. <laughs> Let's Just go like Miami this year. Let's go. Um, yeah. I mean, come on. 20 years from now, I'll be sitting there saying that you enjoy. There's probably still be paying Kevin Keats with like a, it's probably a fucking Bobby Bonilla contract. You know what I mean? Uh, where they were just playing or they're paying him 30 years after he left. Um, but yeah, anyway, I mean, it was, it was a great run. Who am I kidding? It was a great fucking run. I like to talk shit because I'm, I'm an ECU fan, but uh, yeah, it was a great run. Yeah, another ACC team to the final four. NC Nick can put that little feather in his cap. <laughs> you know, beat the Dukies. That's all that we ask. That's for. true. So we can, we get to bring that up every time he brings that up. Um, uh, D- Daniel says that's the most legendary run ever. No, I mean, 83, I think it would be the most no. legendary. Yeah. Is not the most, the most, NC State run most legendary. Yeah. What? I mean, UConn did it with Kemba. So yeah, yeah. NC State yeah. didn't quite finish it up. Oh, on. Daniel, what are yeah. you talking about? Uh folks, I want to tell you that uh in honor of uh of the, the you know this week is the Masters week. Uh the golf gambling podcast guys are giving away a tailor made spider X putter. I got no idea. I don't know anything about golf, but it sounds cool. It sounds like John Gruden talking about uh <laughs> football, uh, spider Y banana. Uh, no, a spider X putter for free sports gambling podcast.com slash masters. Go get yourself a putter. Uh, and attention San Diego shot and Ryan are going to, uh, go into a special circus sports watch party starting Tuesday afternoon at, at 4 PM at uh, swing social free drinks for anyone wearing Cubs or Padres gear, grab a cocktail, say what up. Get on down to the whale's vagina. Uh, also, I want to tell you, we're brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer to peer social betting platform that's US based and available in 40 different states. P2P social betting is a new and better way to bet. Bet directly against your friends or other users on sports, politics, pop culture, and other events with verifiable outcomes. 
Plus, they got a ton of fun social features that give it a feel of a betting social network, so to speak. Uh, Cut also offers lower VIG and fully customizable odds. You can create your own bets, and Cut handles the payment side of things, so you never have to chase old Billy Bob down in the streets. All right. Social features include group chats, betting leaderboards, head to head history, user profiles, fan groups, and much, much more. Download the cut app today or visit uh, cut.com. That's K U T T.com. Use that promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. Uh, we're also brought to you by underdog fantasy and uh, look underdogs. Incredible. Just want to tout this for a second here. Uh, DJ. What did I have here? Hmm. DJ Burns higher than three assists. Tristan Newton lower than 16 and a half points. Mason Gillis higher than six points. Oh, all three cash. Yes. Underdog fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. Pick whether your favorite players will have a higher or lower stat total this week's game for a chance to win big. You can win up to a hundred times the amount of money you enter in a single night. Pick between two and five players to build a pick them entry. Hence that I went with these three here. And uh, I made six hundred dollars. All right, um, just like that. Uh, so what are you doing, folks? Sign up today with the promo code TCE SGPN and get your first deposit doubled up to a hundred dollars as well as the instant pickup special. And look, they'll have national championship. They also have uh, women's college hoops. They have the UFL. They got everything. NHL, NBA. So hop on over there. Uh, visit underdogfantasy.com. Find them in the app store. Don't forget to register with the promo code TCE SGPA to get your first deposit doubled up to $100 as well as an instant pickup special. All right. We are back. Burns. Yes. Um, we are back. Look at that right there. I can dig it. I can dig it. That is yeah, that is NC Nick. That was his tweet. A mural, uh, probably in the area. He goes, "Well, it was a fun run, even if you knocked off Duke twice during it." Can go on the Final Four. <laughs> that is, I run. mean, it, it, that, that, and that's pretty cool. I mean, it gets get some, you know. I hope that's on campus. He walks around and he's just like, "Hey, you know who I am?" I like DJ Burns. He made a mistake by going to NC State, but look, you know. Worked out. He got the Applebee's NIL money. Um, <laughs> Col- you notice how Colby doesn't talk about him like he does with uh, uh, Musa Musa Cisse or whatever. Oh. You start at Tennessee, then you go to Winthrop, and then you end up at NC State. You know, transfer yeah. portal. It's good and bad. Well, the the, the, the difference is is that uh, Burns didn't play at Tennessee. Musa played everywhere he went. It's a little bit different. If you're not seeing the court and you're looking for a better opportunity, now at Winthrop he did play, but yeah. Musa Cisse played everywhere he went, and it was like, hey, this guy was—he was getting like major minutes everywhere he played. He um, changed the rules. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, no, just sick of sick of Stillwater. I'm out. Um. All right, uh, Alabama seventy-two, UConn eighty-six. Uh, I did uh, cash. Well, I should have cashed on Alabama. I thought UConn both sides. One, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, um, cashed on the under. So there's that. But uh, man, UConn at first half, and I had been on uh, Sports Grid. You know, I was trying to sell Alabama. Part of our jobs was to sell Alabama. I was like, don't if you're gonna take Alabama money line, take them first half. Almost, almost hit. Well, almost four. hit. Um, but, uh, yeah, Grant Nelson had a huge game. I think he had like 20 and 15. Um, they played a little bit better than I thought they would, they would in a way, even though they didn't cover this game should have covered. So, so I feel like we should have lost the under, but Alabama should have covered this game. Anybody that's fucking town there, UConn, congrats on your fucking win, but. Yeah. Alabama, Alabama was the right side. I know, I know people get pissed here and that, but Alabama, Alabama had the game plan. They, and I know they made some threes in the first half, but it was off of dribble penetration because they were putting clinging in ball screen after ball screen after ball screen, and UConn could not guard them in the first half. Now they did some things defensively in the second half to um, contain that dribble penetration. But I mean, the game is tied with what eleven minutes left. I, I mean, I thought Alabama for some reason just 
gave up at the end. It was it was bizarre. I will say this: they, someone said coming into it, if Alabama, uh, I was on a show, not not someone as in a fan, but I was doing some 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 radio work, and they said if they shoot forty percent from three, Alabama wins the game. Well, guess what? They shot forty eight percent from three. <laughs> they still lost, uh, and yeah. they didn't cover. Yeah, I I mean we 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 said they needed they needed what they did against Purdue. It was like 18, 19 threes. They they made 12. 11. 11 I'm seeing. 11. Yeah. yeah. And then I think another big thing is they got they got severely out rebounded. Um and points in the paint. Dominated points in the paint uh, to Yukon's edge there. I guess that's kind of just the style that Bama plays though, but uh Yeah. Bama, yeah. I, I thought I thought Bama I thought Bama played well for for 35 minutes, but their execution down the stretch and um, I thought UConn. I know UConn's bitching about those. I thought UConn actually got a good whistle. I don't know what they're bitching about. Um, I, I, I really thought they understand. got a couple bail. I thought they got a couple bailout calls to get him in the bonus in the first half, and then uh, some some favorable ones in the second half as well. So, but I mean, UConn finds a way to pull away um, and cover, which is just unbelievable. Yeah. It was a six seven. This is like game. San Diego State when they when they say this. The chat said that they this was an easy. It was not a fucking easy cover. You guys are full of shit. Shut the fuck up. Well, it's like the San Diego State game in the national championship. Not not this year's yeah. San Diego State game. Last year's it's like a five point game with what two minutes left. Now I know UConn was up twenty, so it's a little bit different. But this, this one um, was different. Alabama yeah. covered for thirty seven yeah. minutes yeah. of the game. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot different actually. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Bad bad comparison by me. Yeah. Um, uh man, I see I see uh people in the chat upset about a UFL beat. That was a horrible beat. Um uh so now it sets up UConn and Purdue. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is kind of what Beanick wanted, right? I would rather have I mean, I don't really care, I guess. It's cool to me that uh Purdue has a chance to get their their first ever national championship. It's not cool to me that UConn is going to get their sixth and 20. I mean, I don't have anything. I don't despise you. I despise Danny Hurley a little bit, but uh, what do you make of the overall matchup? Like, are you like, I'm talking not, not, yeah. not, not like, are you happy that this is the championship game? No, I hate both teams to be honest, but I do like per, I like the Purdue story. I, I think both teams are even, I think they both got really good guards they both have a giant in the middle. Um, they both were able to add a piece in the portal that has really kept them together. Cam Spencer at UConn, Lance Jones at, at Purdue. They both play seven, eight guys. I think this is going to be a hell of a game. Yeah. And what that line opened up at six. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I think I people are disrespecting Purdue a little bit. Uh, I'm, I'm Just actually people hate Edie. I'm way more excited for the national championship game than these two. Even yeah. coming into it, I was like, yeah, you know, like I, I just didn't think Alabama really had a chance. If anything, they actually impressed me a little bit. And then I thought NC State could, but after about five minutes, I was like, I don't think they can. So it was a little disappointing to me. Um, the final four, that is. I am way more excited for this matchup. Um and and I can't wait for this game, and I can't wait to break down the six is the spread. What's your first reaction when you hear six? I know we gotta we gotta you know break everything down, but um, it was the look ahead was five and a half. It's now six. I thought I thought it might be seven if UConn won. Uh, but uh, your thoughts anyway on 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 that? I, I'm kind of scratching my head. I think Noah's in the same boat. I know he's the Purdue fan that. Why did the line go up? What what from tonight? The reigning the national champ, and they've covered every game, right? But so yeah, is but Purdue it was, against better teams. It was set at five and a half earlier in the week, you know. But normally, yeah. I would say if if you took out college basketball, whatever, whatever sport, the team that won the previous championship playing in the next game, I think would get more value after after the game. You know what I mean? It makes sense. I think a lot the of it should be four and a half. A lot of people in the chat are saying that it's fishy. Um, I, I don't think it's fishy. I, I legit think that, you know, the consens consensus feeling of probably a bookmaker is set this thing at six. That's two possessions with two three-pointers. 
uh, including maybe some fouls if you're talking about late game, if it's close. And then let the money move the line. Um, we'll All see. the money is going to be on UConn. Well, and I, then I would think. If, if that moves over six, I think the Purdue would be the play. Um, I even think at six, Purdue's the play, right? I, I I'm kind of laissez fear in this thing. I'm riding a twelve to one on on Purdue. I I don't want to talk like I've been riding this team the entire season. UConn's going to be a legit foe. Um, but no, I'm, I'm just saying like, if, if UConn money moves this, I think six is the fair line. I really do. So now I think what's great. If Purdue wins this game is it puts so much pressure on Mike Woodson in Indiana. Yeah. I think that's always great to watch, right? It's like when Auburn was winning some, some college football national champs, you knew like fucking Alabama was irate. You knew like Alabama has got to do something. Yeah. Right. So they go hire Nick Saban, you know, and, and it, I love watching the, uh, inter interstate, you know, rivalry, uh, aspect of this. I know it has nothing to do with this game, but if Purdue wins the championship, because Indiana hasn't been there in 20 fucking years. I'm surprised they didn't do anything this year. Like just two one seed seasons in a year, in a row where Purdue is just borderline dominant in conference, you would think Indiana makes a move. And they sat on their hands and they kept Woodson. His seat I thought was hot this year. It's gonna yeah. be unbelievably hot. Especially with Dusty May statement. out there. You thought exactly you know, and then exactly. the whole backstory of of Painter who wanted to play at yeah. Indiana. Uh if folks didn't know that, like he wanted to play at Indiana and uh Bobby Knight, who was he was good friends with Bobby Knight's son. Um, it 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 just didn't work out. Bobby Knight never offered him it. He goes to Gene Cady in Purdue, and the rest is history. Um fascinating, fascinating. I mean, to, uh, I guess as uh what like what is the thing that stands out to you? Uh, Hurley, if he wins a second straight national championship, where would you put this UConn team Ooh. as far as teams that uh during our lifetime? I mean you know, UNLV never got that second one, um, but their domination reminds me of UNLV in a way. Yeah. Um, where would you put this? Right at the top, because uh, like Florida and Duke, when they repeated, they didn't. They weren't dominant. Yeah. They yeah. weren't. They weren't like this. That's why they, I think UNLV is like the, the better comparison. But UNLV yeah. didn't win the championship. I know. The other thing with that Florida team, I don't know about Duke. That was pre Noah Beanick. <laughs> Um, but the that Florida was the late, team, the Leitner year. So they, the, they needed I'm, a miracle. To I'm saying, I, I don't know much back. about the roster construction, but the Florida team was the exact same both years. UConn. Yeah. I mean, five of their yeah. top eight guys from last year are, are gone. So, so Duke was the same with Hurley and Leitner and Hill and et cetera. That's, that's what I was saying. So and, like, and, yeah, and, I didn't know and much and about Flor that. Florida needed that Mike Miller buzzer beater. Like I said, like they got tested a little bit more than UConn just yeah, for sure. Every game by 15 points. I think it's the best run that I can recall. I'm impressed by just yeah. the roster turnover and how well they've done. In I'm in, I'm impressed with games like today where like, do I think Alabama should have covered, but Hey, UConn for some reason, they just put it in cruise control and they get these games way out of fucking line in the second half. Three minutes, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, people in the chat are asking for the cocktail number. Uh, it's Yukon minus seven, the cocktail napkin number. So was that a different year, Clark? I thought Florida won the national championship when they barely won. No, 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 no. Mike Miller wasn't on that team. It was Joe Kim Noah, Al Horford, Brewer. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't. That, so that was not the year that they Green and Humphrey. So they didn't get tested then. Why am I thinking? Why um, did I, I, um, they were, they were tested. Like they were, they were in single digit games. They weren't in double digit games every game. You're making me look this up right now. I um, think Ohio, Ohio State pushed him in the national title game. They got pushed by UCLA once. Um, but it, it, it wasn't like this. Although a couple of these have been dressed up by you. That probably. that nucleus. Like I, I got it pulled up right now. That that nucleus was the exact same um, for the Florida teams. And that second Florida run, uh, they dismantled Jackson State in the one versus sixteen game. They won by seven against Purdue, the second round. Then the third Katie. round, they won by eight against Butler. Then they won by eight against Oregon, ten against UCLA in the final four. 
and they beat Ohio State by nine in the championship game. Um, but all those are probably pretty close if you count in some fouling uh, late yeah. when teams That's are down fair. three, four. So yeah, I, winning by eight or nine in four, five, in five straight games to get to win the national championship. Those are those are close ass games. In the year before, they had a four point win against Georgetown, but they still kind of worked a lot of the teams they played. Um, yeah, Duke, I still think Duke got worked. Duke, I mean, yeah. Duke, Duke needed the Leitner shot against Patino. Yeah, in Kentucky, one of the greatest they, games, they, yeah. one of the greatest games I've ever seen, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, what do we make of Bama before I, I jump to more of the national championship talk? Uh, Bama. First ever year to the final four. Can NATO build on that? Is this a flash in the pan? Like you think you said NC State's not going to make the, the tournament you think next yeah. year? Um Alabama, can they can they can this be the the, the like sweet six? Can they be essentially like sweet sixteen, elite eight, final four every year? I think sweet sixteen, round of thirty two. They're so unique with the way that they play. I like we talked about it. We liked their team better this year than last year. I know they had the the hype machine last year with Brandon Miller, but felt like they were more of a team this year with Sears at leading them and, and then Estrada came on. Uh Nelson was really good. He gave Klingon fits tonight when they uh went small ball. Um they're hard to prepare for in the tournament and when they're an underdog, they're they play fearless, but um, yeah, I, I think they could be a tournament team each and every year and, and get to the second weekend. I don't know. I don't know if they can get back to the final four anytime soon. That's hard to do with that style of play, but uh great run for Nate Oates. Yeah. Beanick, what do you think of the the tide moving forward? How Mac just finished that, I want to start start with. It, they need good matchups. Like the San Diego yeah. State game last year was like the perfect hell matchup for that style of ball. However, this year I, I agree with him in saying that we liked kind of the personnel on this year's team uh, a little bit better than last year's. We knew Brandon Miller was going to be an NBA prospect, but also it brought a, a lot of distractions late in the year. Um, one, because of the prospect status and going into the draft, but two, because of what happened. Um, that's why I think this coaching job from Oates and even more, he was extended prior to the NCAA tournament. That's yeah. impressive as well. That's one reason why I faded them kind of right away. Um, and they overachieved this year. And I, I, that's direct telling me to go directly to, that was a great coaching job. And plus I, I saw it on the Twitter timeline today, um, a comparison of Mark Sears to Jalen Brunson. And I was like, you know, that's not too far off. Yeah. Cause mm. he, mm. he had, he had a great tournament this is what I'm saying though. Uh, and the, the physical characteristics, I don't think are too far off Mac. They used to post up Brunson that Brunson was a bad motherfucker. That dude, they could, they had to double him in the post and he was a six foot guard. I like, I like Sears. Yeah. Brun, Brunson's Brunson's another level, but I, I mean, Sears was Sears was a badass this tournament. Yeah, I know he was I heard that just because they're both light skinned and they're both lefties and they and they kind of had the same similar hair. I, you know, people love to throw out those comparisons. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I mean, I Brunson appreciate I appreciate what he's saying, but it, yeah. that's bold. That's bold. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm going to hit you with some news in a second, but before I do that, I want to tell you that the college basketball experience is brought to you by AVO. Yes. We're the proud. We're proud to uh, partner up with AVO, the premier sports betting arbitrage tool. If you're uh, new to arbitrage sports betting, it's very simple. Basically, bet, betting both sides of a bet at two different sports books to lock in a profit. Yes, uh, AVO. It, it, they have a tool that scans the sports books looking for you know discrepancies essentially uh, in the odds, and then that'll tell you how much money you will get. You know how much money you need a place to make a profit at each sports book. Essentially, uh, the tool is super easy to use. It's lightning fast, as you know, and it's a big it's a big part uh, of of essentially sports betting over at Arbitrage. Is it's gonna it's just gonna a book will change a number super fast, and I'm about to touch on that because right now I see Purdue UConn at six and a half now, guys. Um, so. 
Uh, I guarantee you, if you go on over to AVO, they're going to have that updated. So it's going to react lightning fast. So you can get in on that. Uh, and the best part of AVO is currently free to use without restrictions. That's right. People completely free. Get started today over at arbs versus odds.com. That's a R B S verse like, like a matchup VS odds.com. All right. So hop on over there. We're also brought to you by manscaped. Yes. It's springtime. Clean everything. Clean your fucking house. It's a brand new year. Shave your ass, shave your balls, and do it with the lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. The fifth generation trimmer features two interchangeable next gen skin safe blade heads. Uh, one, the standard one, you know, the, the old school, the classic. Take a little off the top. And two, a brand new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. It also has two dual LED spotlights to guide you through the darkest of winter debris. Navigate your ass with confidence. All right. Hate making a mess. Don't worry. This thing's waterproof. Get your ass down to, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Get yourself over to Lake Ontario. Jump in, shave your ass wherever you're located. Just find a body of water, jump in or uh, maybe a shower bath. I don't know. Uh, Just jump on over there. It's great. That waterproof, come on. You got to love that. You always just want to see if it's waterproof. It says it's waterproof. I, that's the first thing I did when I saw it. I said, oh, really? Let me see. Um, get 20% off and free shipping with the promo code SGP at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the promo code SGP at manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spring cleaning in your pants. We're back on the college basketball experience. Um, and, uh, Six and a half now, guys. I'm seeing six and a half on multiple places right now. Shop to your drop customers. Is it going to get to seven, Mac? I don't think so. I do you think it? I don't think it's going to get to seven. I think they'll get hammered if it gets to seven. Beanick, you think it will get to seven? I mean, my cocktail napkin has it at seven. Um, I, I it might. I, I have no idea what other people are out there thinking. Um, are they whether... not going to call fouls on UConn? Am I missing something? Uh, are, are they just going to well, let them well, beat well, up? Well, yeah, I don't get. I right, no way they're not going to call. Fouls is there a reason for the line movement? You said you had breaking news. Was it just because the line moved? Is that why you said? That? Yeah, that, that that was it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like that was. Uh, it was surprised to me that it happened that fucking fast. I guess, but yeah. um, all across the board too. A lot of. Uh, I hear there's rumors on the. Uh, Internets. Sorry, sorry. Um, a lot of books are still at or are at six and a half now, where it was around six most of the places. Um, Mac mentioned, you know, are they not going to call fouls on UConn? Uh, let's let's talk about it a little bit. I did some research because, uh, you know, UConn fans are up in arms about what happened to them in the Final Four of the women's uh, tournament. Uh, with the foul called at the end of the game there. Um, so they're ready to explode on any uh, close call or non-call. Uh, the referee tandem for this game is going to be Jeffrey Anderson, Terry Oglesby, and Roger Ayers. Now, when you go on the Ken Palm, you can look at ref ratings, and he's got data on everything. So Jeffrey Anderson, who's the high knees guy, uh, there's a great... Uh, I don't know what you want to call it, a parody count, uh, just putting out whenever he does the high knees clips. Um, It's great. He's rated as the number one ref in the country. Oglesby is number three, and Ayers is number six. Uh, Personally, I have known about Anderson because of that account, but also because he does a lot of Big Ten games. He's not labeled a Big Ten ref like you do get units in college football, Big Ten ref, Big 12 refs, ACC refs. Uh, These guys go all over the place but he does kind of hit the Midwest hard. He had seven games for Purdue this year. Purdue was five and two in those games, two of their losses this year. Um, and they are what? Um, 34 and four. So Edie had been roughed terribly in the Wisconsin big 10 tournament game. The reason why I kind of wanted to do this research is because he was on that crew um, and Edie shot 19 free throws. He had 28 points in that game. Wisconsin was called for 28 fouls 
Purdue only 17. The rest of the game logs are not nearly as bad as that. Um, however, Edie doesn't really get coddled by Anderson, it looks like. Four free throws against Illinois. Uh, that was the last week of the regular season. He had 13 free throws against Rutgers, 15 against Iowa, three against Illinois, nine against Arizona uh, in the non-conference. That was uh, also in Indianapolis. Uh, and then there was a game where three big men from Northwestern, their game plan was just to hack Edie. He had 20 uh, free throws in that game, finished with 35 points. Northwestern had 29 fouls. In that game, Purdue had 27. So, I mean, it's been rough pretty fairly. I don't think we're going to be in store for an ED foul fest here. Uh, Oglesby only refed three Purdue games this year. Uh, Purdue went 3-0, blowouts in all of them. Um, 14 free throws, 11 free throws, 8 free throws. Uh, ED averaged 24.5 points in those games. Uh, Purdue's opponents were all called for fouls more than the Boilermakers. Roger Ayers refed 107 games this regular season. Didn't have Purdue once. Oh. Um, <laughs> so Ayers was, or UConn was 2-0 in Ayers' two games uh, that he refed them. 1-0 for Terry Oglesby. Uh, however, UConn was fouled four more times when they had Anderson against Gonzaga in the non-con. That was basically in Seattle. So uh, road game there. They had Anderson as their ref. They won the game by double digits. However, they had four more fouls than Gonzaga. That's your ref report here. I don't think it makes a huge difference, but just wanted to lay it all out on the line. There you go. Noah being a blowing the whistle on the college basketball experience. Um, I mean, BJ says Purdue's going to choke here. I'm just here to listen to it. I mean, that's the first thought uh, when I think of uh, it, shit. It, it I'll go from Purdue. Off? I hate Purdue. It was the last time they ever won anything, anyways. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean it's not a choke job. But I'm saying is like, for for whatever reason, it seems like in my life, watching Purdue in anything. Kind of just seems like they always fall just short, you know. Big game, uh, you know, about to, you know, win the Big Ten championship. No, I, I'm rooting for them just because they haven't had a natty, and I want to see how Indiana responds to it. You know, I love watching that, but um, I, I, I'm certainly uh, weary of that because I do think Painter. I mean, obviously, he's done an unbelievable job. You lose in the national championship, it's not. It's not choking in a way, but it is like Purdue just in general has a thing about it in huge games. Now it's gotten this far. Can it win one more and change the way Purdue's perceived? Because that's a clip from a fucking movie. I just played it. it even Hollywood's writing about how Purdue can't write <laughs> shit or win shit. Um, um, can they do that? Uh, I don't know. What do you think? Beanick? You think they can win it out? Right. Uh, I think there's a way that they could. It involves probably uh, a cold night from a, a couple of UConn guards. They had, we were all over that Stefan Castle game tonight, by the way. Yeah. Um, with, without and, him. And Klingon did play great too. Yeah. And what, so he's bandaged on, on the right hand. He got hurt in practice up. the day before this game. Yeah. Um, I was a little bit worried about that. Um, after hearing that story at tip off. Um, but yet, I mean, without uh, Castle tonight, he had 21 points. That was like, I think a season high for him. If, if you don't, if you don't get that point out, but they, they might've lost this game against Alabama. Um, I don't think Purdue's good enough defensively. They're going to need some missed shots. Yeah. Yeah. Um I look, I want them to win. I look, I, I can't wait to see if it's if it climbs. I'm right now, I would still take the points. I, I think, but there is a clear coaching like in game. I don't know that Painter has proven to me that he has fixed stuff in game. Whereas Hurley super, I thought he coached circles impressive. around Keats today, though. Well, I mean, fuck. <laughs> I, you give me 20 drinks at the fucking bar. I could do that. Um, uh, yeah, I'm just team. saying it was pretty yeah, evident yeah. for me. Um, 
Well, Hurley's like proven it to me as much as I talk a ton of shit about Danny Hurley. Like, I think he's a great in game coach at adjustments. Um, I'm looking right now, you know, Purdue's the much faster team, 194th in pace. UConn is 305th. I and still think it's going to be a pretty slow game, though. It's like, gonna, yeah, it's yeah. kind of right in the middle, but I think it's going to be a slower game. I was looking at the total, it's 146. I think that's a bit high. I don't think we're getting a 73 73 game. Oh, I'm all, I'll, I'll keep riding these unders at these fucking Absolutely. NFL stadiums. Yeah. That's yeah. Um, that under. Yeah. So. Both teams, you know, uh, produce the better offensive rebounding team, but I mean, both teams, in, uh, you know, I, I think UConn's 54th in the nation. Both teams, check this out, produce the second best team in the nation in passing the ball. UConn's they are third. Incredible at moving the ball. UConn's third, though. So it's great fucking matchup as far as that goes. Uh, UConn's much better though at protecting the ball than uh, Purdue. Purdue's 133rd. UConn is 16th. Uh, UConn number one in offensive rating. Uh, Purdue fourth. Uh, but the big one here is UConn's number ten in defensive rating. Purdue 85th. I know it's just defensive rating. Sometimes you can look too far into that shit. But just want to throw it out there. Throw it out there. I mean, look, I'll, I'll take the points. Uh, right now, I got to think about this. I, I'm not going to bet this. I'm going to wait and see where this line sits. I'm going to bet this probably tomorrow night. Um, But I lean right now, Purdue. Mac, Purdue and under. That's my lean right now. What do you lean? Definitely the under. Beanick And the Purdue Boilermakers. Are going to cut down the nets on Monday night. They're Ooh. going to win outright, and I'm telling you, here's how they're going to do it. Thank what you, you what Creighton? Look at what Creighton did against UConn. They have the recipe. They got a big stiff like Calc Brenner with Edie. Put him right in the middle. He doesn't have to guard clinging on the perimeter. UConn's not a big ball screen team, which is what Edie struggles with. Edie can clog up all those cuts that UConn does, the curls, stagger screens, and then they're going to throw it inside, and they're going to get clinging in foul trouble, just like every other team. I'm not going to fight it anymore. Edie's going to get a favorable <laughs> Kansas did the same shit, too, to UConn. They put Dickinson. Yeah, but that was in Lawrence. Ass. Yes, but they beat them, and they sucked. They beat them because they put them in, they switched everything, and they funneled everything to Dickinson. Creighton did the same thing. And then I think he, uh, Purdue will make shots. I think Braden Smith will bounce back. He had his, he had his, uh, he got his nerve game out of the way. Yeah. He's been great all year. I have no reason to think that he won't bounce back. I think Purdue is going to shock the world and get their first national championship on Monday night. Let's go. But I love Bra the under. Brandon Cook says, coming from a guy who had the pussy pack in Bama covering. Well, you know, we also did have the under in both games. All right. I mean, fuck. Um, and Alabama should have covered. That was the right side. NC State, I'll, I'll give you. Pussy pack, bad play. Yeah. Uh, Beanick, what do you lean right now? Uh, like you, I have a lot of thinking to do <laughs> over the next day and a half. You just think um, about <laughs> The I, I, you watch the you watch every Purdue are. game. You know what they struggle I'm, against. You know what their strengths are against. Yeah, I I, I don't think their strength is. I I think strength on strength, and I think UConn's a better team from what I've seen so far this year. I I think the battle. Well, the reason why I did a lot of the ref research is I think the battle is going to be won with at the free throw line. UConn uh, takes the thirteenth most free throws per field goal attempt. Purdue fouls the fourth least in the country. I don't know how the whistle's going to no. go in this game. That's that's what I that's what I think. Well, like because at the end of the game, somebody's going to if they're if they're down by possession, they're going to foul and lose the cover. That's that's in my position, in my opinion. The six, I don't think matters. Whoever wins is winning by seven or eight, in my opinion. Yeah. But, but by the way, I, I keep seeing people say that UConn's going to go on twenty. They're not going to go on twenty zero run against no. Purdue. They're no. going to throw the no. fucking ball to the big seven foot five big fuck, and he's going to get fouled to stop the run. They're not going to just keep shooting jump shots like Illinois. That's yeah. not what what for, 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 or driving it at clinging it and, and just throwing the shit over the backboard. Purdue's not going to give up a 20 0 run. And for we're what it's worth, we're disrespecting Purdue a little bit at, at this point. 
in my opinion. I'm not taking Purdue to win on the money line like you are. I, I think UConn can still win this game, but seven points, these are the two best teams we've seen all year. Yes. So I think set six and a half, seven points, gigantic fucking number considering that. Um for what it's and, worth, a lot of people are gonna look at this NC State game and see that Zach Eady had five turnovers and a UConn does the same thing. This is what you're gonna hear on other shows. If UConn does the same thing that NC State does and they double team Edie, he'll have trouble. Purdue adjusted in the second half. Basically, somebody called it out on the broadcast. I forget who it was, but every time that Edie put the ball on the floor, that was when the double team came. And that's when Edie would Edie would purposely put it on the floor and then kick it out right away over whoever was double teaming, and they would hit a three. And Purdue was on fire from deep today. So they hit like 47% of their threes. I'm not nervous. They have the about whole that. they have the whole Virginia angle too. It's yeah, like they, they they have the to me like the storyline you're but, talking about. Well, just the eye of the tiger, man. You know what I mean? And Al- Alfred, I would disagree so much, man. San Diego State was never like a top ten team last year. What are they may, maybe crept up to like number ten, but like Purdue all year has been sitting there. Like this is, I think that the I don't like that years, comparison. Never left the AP I, yeah. top three. You know, I don't think that's a fair comparison. And then. uh Brandon He's Cook says, Houston. Brandon Cook says, did you cash a Bama ticket? Then that's not the right side. You're that's fucking stupid. All right. <laughs> Shut up. We've talked about this a million times. No, All right. It's Get stupid. the fuck out of here then because dude, you don't understand. Fuck it. We, we were just talking about a UFL game. I could do a 30 minutes on that fucking thing right now. And hell there's a, there's always a right side. There's always a right side. Uh, shit. If NC state makes a three, they cover, but was it the right side? No, it wasn't. It, had they done that, it would not have been. They were losing um, by twenty with two minutes to go. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Um, I'll I'll say this too. Like if you're I, banking I on said, a miracle cover over and over again. Good luck fucking winning this year or ever. I mean that yeah. shit fucking. You only can get so many lucky backdoor covers. I mean all you can do is handicap the game, be on the right side. Hopefully you don't get a bad beat. And yeah, I mean it wasn't a bad beat. It just was. It was a tough. Last three minutes where Bama just yeah. decided. To no, no, I love this one. You, you know what? You're the one that's stupid. You, <laughs> okay. you're the fucking one that's stupid. Okay. Um, I, dude, I will say, go ahead. No, I'm saying UConn has done unbelievable all year, but they haven't. Let's be honest, they haven't faced a team. Purdue, UConn, and Houston were on another level all college basketball season. We didn't see Houston. The injury took them out. Maybe they would have lost. Who fucking knows? So. I do think it's it's ridiculous to compare if you're comparing any of the other teams with Purdue right now. Even though I didn't have Purdue this far, I think it's ridiculous because they have been in fuck you mode the whole year. I mean, you These look at Ken Houston. Palm too. Yeah, These you look at Houston Ken Palm. Three best teams. Yeah. It's yeah. UConn, Purdue, Houston. That's one, two, three. Yeah. That's the three teams that it's been the entire year. I will say because Mac has said, I haven't mentioned this part yet. He, he said that I watch Purdue a lot, which is true. I've probably watched them even more than Michigan this season. <laughs> I had never seen Braden Smith struggle as much as he did today. I really think, like, I don't know what else it could be other than the bright light syndrome. Like, he just shit his pants in the first half. UConn's going to dial up pressure early. That's that's the nightmare yeah. for me. If he can't handle that, then it's we're shit out of luck. The, the the nightmare for me is in game adjustments. That to me, like is is, I I can't help but think of Painter getting out coached so many games in the NCAA tournament. Now not, it hasn't happened this year, really. But yeah, and he also shifted the ball carrier to get over half court today. Lance Jones carried it up. <laughs> yeah, for the yeah, final ten minutes yeah. of the first half, <laughs> I, which is hilarious. I, but I, uh, yeah. I think I gotta think Braden Smith's gonna bounce back. He's been a top ten point guard in the I country know, all year. I, know, I just I agree. I can't. I, I gotta think that. Okay, I know Tristan Newton's fucking good. But Braden Smith, he got the get, he got the mulligan out of the way. I think he's going to play well on Monday night. That's my hope. Yeah. This guy says you're trying to justify bad fucking picks. No, the bad pick was your mom out of that fucking dive wow. bar. All right, please, get the please, fuck please, out of here, dude. Get mute the, the fuck, fuck out of here. Yeah. Uh, look, I just I gave, away, I gave away props. I gave away <laughs> props that we hit. I hit on both under Kentucky fuck money you. line again. Yeah. For what it's worth, yeah. I had UConn. I, I said they would win it by 20 today. So if you're happy by me saying that, I think I was wrong in my read on the game. However, I still cashed that ticket. 
So yeah. the NC State one, I'll even say, but don't try to say Bama shouldn't it? like Bama that that even what if what like one free throw or two free throws go a different way, it's yeah. a complete and, and they were covering for a large chunk of that game. You cannot say the same with all those other games. San Diego State was down like twenty, like one minute in the second half. All right, uh, all the other matchups too. I feel like they they fucked up all of them. Uh, Alabama hung in later than almost every team. So, um, in my opinion, uh, either way, nice win for you. You're a UConn fan. Enjoy it. Enjoy for it. for those that tuned into the show for a pick in the national championship. I think your pick is the under. Like that's what we're all giving out here on this show. Yeah. If you're gonna leave the show with one pick, it would be the under. Yeah. Uh, I think the under is this the safest play. Yeah. I think the under is the safest play right now. I'm fucking nervous. <laughs> like on the I, under? No, 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 no. I'm no. on the game. I, I I think UConn wins. What are you a fucking Purdue fan? Well, I I, I think <laughs> UConn wins too, but six and a half points is to me, well, this is like a a title fight. As long as like, so I think UConn can win, you know, seventy two to seventy or something. You know what I mean? Like, it does, just six and a half is a big number when you have these two teams that have been playing great all year. You know. Mm-hmm. Final score. What do you think? I mean, I just said seventy two seventy, kind of talking out of my ass, but fuck it. Seventy two seven. I'll go sixty. Yeah, it's probably going to be less scoring than sixty-nine. Yeah. Zach Eady's thinking of that freaking room. Uh, thinking of that freaking room he was going in with that chick in between the Elite Eight and Final Fours. So sixty-nine Purdue, UConn sixty-six denial. Let's go. Boiler up ends the Big Ten streak for Noah Beanick. That'd be amazing. Is that what you? Is that what we're going <laughs> this shit? Per destiny and <laughs> choo choo. Fuck, I hate Purdue too, but I'm rooting for Purdue for sure. It, uh, yeah, I mean, just for the the sheer, like, every Indiana fan is going to be super. Every alum at Indiana is going to be super fucking pissed off, and that's always fun to see. Do you um, agree with Daniel in saying that the this is the closest uh, matchup college basketball no. national championship in the last five years? What What about U- UVA Texas Tech comes to mind. Yeah, that was overtime. Shit. Kansas yeah. and North Carolina was yeah, a yeah, it came yeah. all the way back. And then Nova, the, Nova, North Carolina is not five years ago, but that yeah, that's probably six or seven, year. right? Yeah, I was in I was in an airport in Dublin watching that. Um, really? Yeah, Dublin. yeah, awesome. Uh, cocktail napkin has UConn seventy two sixty five. So my 72 is uh, accurate. It's just the 65 that's fucked. Sharp. Hey, there you go. All right. He doesn't need no system. Yeah, no I don't need no fucking Netflix. cocktail yeah. napkins. All yeah. right. Uh, folks, we're, we'll be back. We'll be back. We're, I think we're going to do a little episode Monday pregame. Maybe even Some tomorrow night. We're going to talk. Player props. Player yeah. props. DFS. Yeah. Who knows? So, uh, more more confident picks. <laughs> Maybe a, a a guest or two as well. Who knows? Yeah, we're gonna figure it all out. All right, uh, but until then, give Noah B a follow on Twitter at Noah B seventy seven underscore Moneyline Max on Twitter at Moneyline underscore Mac. I'm on Twitter at the Colby D. We appreciate each and every one tuning in, even the fucking guy who said, "You know, yeah, I'm picking bad picks. You're 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 fucking stupid." All right, uh, no, we're grateful. Come back. All right. Or not. I don't really give a shit, but uh, look, subscribe to the college basketball experience. Also uh, college football experience, the college baseball experience, the FCS college football experience. Don't forget about the Ryan and Russ show in the big 12 experience. Uh, get on over there. Check all of that stuff out. Check out the bottom line bombs podcast and the sports gambling podcast, which will be live tomorrow. Talk at college hoops. Until then, folks, um, this is the college basketball experience. You better start thinking about yours. And we out of here. Can't be fast.
hands off so I can't be found. I'm on a worldwide tour, touring every fucking curtain down. They say the Lord watches over my sins. Over my head, watching hair as it thins. Over the ledge, it ain't letting me in. There's still regiments and relevance to letting me win. Win, win, lose a draw. You ain't prepared unless you all ready to lose it all. Losing a bra? Yeah, that's a ride a day. Good friends know my Nina hideaway. They came and went, but the riders stay. So it's like I won the lottery and can't be found. Until I resurface with the latest purchase. 33 and a third and 45 circles. You ain't got that shit. And I ain't 45 king. But on the beats, I've been doing my thing. When I start the program and the doorbell ring, I gotta leave town to a place I can't be found. My celly's off, so I can't be found. I'm on a worldwide tour, touring every fucking curtain down. American dreams, lessons, and still they work. I guess the sand on the beach still was really dirt. Now I'm going home, flying over Rome at 30,000 feet. Like, damn, is that really Earth? I see the killers work on walls, familiar turf. Got a little school in grad, 101 was first. Got a little school in math, didn't really work. But put the numbers on the block and I make them hurt. Any block is my stomping ground where my people lay low so they can't be found. They don't want to be. Ain't from the crew, but I'm on a Liquid, solar assassin, like harmony. Type of armory that's more than a shield. Yeah. Type of armory's DeLorean steals.